All right, I hope you had fun with that. Um, so that's the bulk of it. That's the theory behind it. Let's try to apply it on a couple of things that we've talked about in previous lessons. Now we can uh, actually make sense of the quadratic inequality sides of those problems. So here's the first one. Find the domain of each function. So domain, domain is everything that you get to stick in for x, remember? And, and we talked about a couple of exceptions to all real numbers. Most, say, polynomial equations especially, they're going to have their domain as all real numbers. Um, something that's going to limit it is something like a square root. Because the square root, whenever I graph it on the coordinate plane, it, it can't be imaginary. So the way that I keep this from being imaginary is that the square roots got to be greater than or equal to zero. So, I take everything that is inside the square root there, and I set it greater than or equal to zero. So, x squared minus 121 greater than or equal to zero. So, now can you see how this is an application of what we were just doing? Of course you can. So, instead of thinking this as an inequality, let's think of this as x squared minus 121 is equal to zero. Just do some pretending. I know you're good at it. Add the 121 over x squared equals 121, take square root, plus or minus 11. Okay, so far. Now let's put it on a number line. Right there. Got 0, got 11, got a negative 11. Uh, these do get colored in because it's equal to. And then let's do a test value. Is 0 going to make this true? If I plug 0 in here, I get 0 squared minus 121 is negative 121. That would be imaginary. So it must be on the outside of this. Also, we had x squared minus 121 is great or, and it's a great or. So my domain on this is from negative infinity to negative 11. It gets a bracket. Union, another bracket, positive 11 up to infinity. Okay, so why don't you go ahead, there is one right beside it, number two, give that one a try on your own, after you have paused this. Alright, here we are, let's see if you got yours right. Ah, uh, I see you chose red, good color choice. Okay, so uh, this one proceeds exactly like the previous one, set whatever's in the uh, square root greater than or equal to zero, Pretend like it's an equation and solve it like usual to find your two critical values. Um, and this time it's shaded in between there. Now you might go, oh, this is a great or. But notice that the shortcut doesn't work this time because the x squared is negative. Well, if you were to multiply everything by negative to make it positive again, that would flip the sign over and make it less and. Alternatively, you could use yourself a test value. I chose the origin, of course, 0. Plug 0 in, it makes it a true statement, so it's everything in between negative 11 and 11. Okay, so here's one more application of quadratic inequalities. And that is, uh, well, we saw this before. We talked about how tough of a question it was. Now it's not quite so tough because we understand how to solve quadratic inequalities with one variable. We want to find the value of b that makes 4x squared plus bx plus 9 equal to 0. Have one solution, to one real solution, two real solutions, or two imaginary solutions. And remember, this all comes from the discriminant. Discriminant. Which is the b squared minus 4ac. For the one real solution, that's got to be equal to zero. For two real solutions, it's got to be greater than zero. To imaginary, it is less than zero. Okay, so let's set this up, and instead of doing one... Yeah, let's do this in this order. One real solution. Reason why is because we're going to have to solve the equation before an inequality. That makes sense. So part A, we want b squared minus 4 times a, which is 4, times uh, c, which is 9, and this is going to be equal to 0. Multiplying this out, I get uh, 16 times 9, 
16 and 9. Here's 54, 5, 14. There we go. So b squared minus 144 equals 0. b squared equals 144. So b is just simply equal to plus or minus 12 when I take the square root. So if I plug in a positive 12 or a negative 12, I would get one real answer. Reason why is because that's what makes this thing a perfect square trinomial. All right, let's try part B. Why don't I change colors just because? Color, 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 red, C. No, B comes after A. Here we got <clears throat> all the numbers and stuff will be the same, so B squared minus 144, but this time it's going to be greater than zero. We already know our two critical values. <clears throat> I need some water here. Mm. Two critical values are plus and minus 12. So why don't I just go ahead and put those on a number line. 0, a 12, negative 12. Uh, are the 12s open or closed circles? Open, because it's not equal to. And this is great or, so I should shade on the outside of this, correct? Correct. Um, also, I could uh, plug in 0. 0 squared minus 144. It is not greater than 0. It's less than. So the answer on this one is from negative infinity all the way up to negative 12. Both of these get parentheses. Union. Positive 12 to infinity. Okay, and shall we change colors again? What color would you like? I like green. All right, if you say so. Green it is. So part C, B squared minus 144 is less than zero this time. Same critical values, same kind of graphy thing, zero, 12, and negative 12 open circles around those things. Well, obviously, if this one was greater than and shaded on the outside, this one has to be shaded on the inside because it's less than. And it's a less than. If I plug uh, 0 in this time, I have 0 minus 144. Negative 144 is less than 0. Definitely checks out. This time, negative 12. All the way up to positive 12. If I were to pick anything in there, I would have two imaginary solutions. So that wraps up objective three here on solving quadratic inequalities with one variable. So as you can see, here was our journey in this lesson. Graphing quadratic inequalities in two variables. Here you made yourself a parabola, a boundary parabola. Maybe it was dashed, maybe it was uh, solid. And then you had to shade either up above that parabola or down below the parabola. Then on objective two, graphing a system of those things. You had to do it, maybe two parabolas, and see where their shading overlapped. And then finally, number three, what we just finished up, solving quadratic inequality with one variable. Maybe it is an and inequality, maybe it's an or inequality. All right, so here's your assignment. There's Rowan asking about sandwiches. Anyway, see you next lesson. See you in class, actually. Bye.